Hello YouTube, this is uh, Mark Hill and I'm here for another exciting episode of the Traveling NP. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. Uh, you know, I guess the reality of, of what I do may not be or seem very exciting to the average person, but um, as providers, as nurse practitioners, um, Locums is a very exciting life. Um, there's a lot of adventure. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of places to see. A lot of people to meet. Uh, so, yes. I do think locums and working the way I do is very exciting. And, and uh, my my family and I look at it as a, as a life of adventure. And that's what it is. But I digress. That's not what I plan this video to be about today. What I wanted to talk about today was a subject that I brought up in a previous video and I've gotten quite a bit of interest from people either on Facebook or uh, sending me, you know, text messages or emails and things of that nature. And that is um, telemedicine. Now, you ask why would you be talking about telemedicine on a channel that is focused on um, locum tenums uh, nurse practitioner and you know I guess technically as a traveling NP I can talk about anything I want but the reason why telemedicine is in, is a pertinent issue in my life and in my career my profession and and maybe it's yours as well is that telemedicine has become a fantastic um, tool that I use to supplement my income while I get and work on and pursue the locum assignments that I really want instead of having to take whatever I can take. Now I say supplement and the truth is, is that, I'm just going to be honest, the telemedicine is a very lucrative form of, of uh, working as a provider. Um, it is not uncommon, and I have, I've been doing telemedicine off and on now for about four years. Um, I started doing telemedicine when I was working as a private practice uh, nurse practitioner in Mississippi. Um, and just in the last six months or so, it's really kind of blossomed into a lot more. Um, and when I say I supplement my income, I actually make a really good income on telemedicine and could probably just sit back and do telemed. Um, I make anywhere from 2000 to $2,500 a week just on telemedicine. And that is with not a lot of time involved. Some thinking, you know, and, and some time. You know, I'll probably put 15, 20 hours a week into telemedicine. But I'm maximizing that time and turning uh, turning that into a uh, good profit. Um, so, you know, you can average 2000 $2,500, $2,500 a week just doing telemedicine. And that's on top of whatever your locum assignments are. Um, so, now, let me just say this about telemedicine. There ain't nothing fun about it. And it is not something that I would want to do full-time, forever. Um, maybe I'll do it forever, but I won't ever do it full-time. It is not fun. You're talking on the phone with people. You're deciding what product... Most of the time, these people have called in or sent in a request form for a certain product or a medication or, in a lot of cases, um, uh, orthopedic uh, splints, back braces, braces for the knees, things like that. And you have to get on the phone with them and determine what their needs are, if they really have a need, put all their medical stuff in, and then... Um, 
send a prescription over. And it's a lot of what I do too is I do diabetic uh, consultations with people um, who are type 1 and type 2 diabetes to um, get prescriptions for their diabetic testing supplies sent over to a um, online pharmacy. Um, and a lot of times it's because these people are having trouble getting in to see their primary care or there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, so now there are some medications and some things that I have decided I won't do. Like one of the companies I work for, they wanted us to start doing uh, interviews about uh, and prescribing um beta blockers and thiazide diuretics for blood pressure and things like that and i just told him that i was not comfortable doing that um over the phone that that was something that needed to have face-to-face -face interview with a full physical evaluation and and uh, so i just pretty much refused to do things like that um, there's also telemedicine out there that where you're just doing like urgent care type treatment of people who call in with a sore throat or ear pain or whatever. I think just phone interviews, things like that are difficult to, uh, to truly assess people for appropriate uh, disease processes going on. I don't do any of that particular type of telemedicine. I think as, as um, videography and, and video stuff improves where people can can give you a picture of themselves uh, over the phone that will probably make um, telemedicine a little more viable for me uh, but uh, like most you know conscientious uh, providers I want to if I'm treating somebody for pharyngitis or otitis media or an acute sinusitis I really want to see what's going on I want to listen to those lungs I want to see that that uh, pharynx and those tonsils and I want to palpate those those uh, uh, lymph nodes and I want to see the eardrum and I want to you know I want to do all those things and just hearing about that stuff over the phone I'm not real comfortable with that now we'll see where technology goes it may improve so ba basically what I do is I do a lot of DME stuff I do a lot of ordering uh, diabetic supplies I do a lot of topical creams for uh, rashes, dermatitis, um, even um, antifungal type creams. I also work for a company where we do uh, um, biome testing, fecal, oral, and vaginal swabbing um, to determine the, the flora um, of individuals and in their bowels or vaginal secretions or oil secretions um, and determine if their symptoms constitute uh, testing for this type of thing so and that's a big part of what I do as well and that's kind of interesting um, but I use it as a tool because I really enjoy locums and I will always be a bedside provider um, it's something that I do to make sure that I have a steady income to support my family between assignments. Because after this last, I finish up this current urgent care assignment December 7th. I've already told all my account managers and all my recruiters that I will no longer be working longer term assignments. And when I say longer term, the extent of my assignments will be no greater than 10 days um i'm going back to the critical access hospitals i'm going back to the the critical access uh clinics that have urgent needs um, i'm going for the short-term stuff um, and my my goal is to work no more than 10 day stretches and then be off um, I found that that in the long run is a lot more financially lucrative. The money's better. Most of these critical access hospitals are 24 hour shifts and you'll work three or four or five of them in a row and their census is not very high. So you can sleep most of the time at night and you come away from there with a good payday. So essentially I'll still be doing full time hours every month. I just won't be doing full time days. And so I'll fall back on my telemedicine um, to supplement my income 
or make a good income. I guess it really depends on how you look at it. Um, while I am off. So if I'm working seven to 10 days a month, that means I have anywhere from 20 to 23 days off of my locums job. And during the winter, I'll fly back and forth from my home in Mississippi. But during the summer months, we'll head back up north where it's not quite so hot. And uh, I'll work out of my fifth wheel trailer. My wife and son and I all travel in a fifth wheel travel trailer. And we station at different places and work, and uh, and I'll travel around one week or so, or, and then come back to the to the uh, typically RV resorts or wherever we are set up, and it's really kind of a fun, exciting life, um, and we enjoy it. So, if you're in locums, uh, whether you're starting out or whether you're a veteran, and you found that um, your downtime between assignments is a little stressful and uh, sometimes can be financially uh, painful on you, um, consider telemedicine. Telemedicine is not hard, but it's also not fun. Um, it's just kind of monotonous and boring and, you know, it's not something that you're, that a real, you know, provider who loves patient care is going to really be interested in doing now. There may be some people out there that are on the that are on the end of their careers, or maybe they're burnt out um, with patient care. Who telemedicine telemedicine may be the way to go at least for a while to get you, um, you know, get your heart and mind back into uh, practicing. Look, I've been there. Uh, it's it's easy to get burnt out in the field that we're in. Medicine is tough. It's a tough field. There's a high burnout rate. Uh, so consider telemedicine. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there that are doing it, and telemedicine is the wave of the future. It's going to be, I'm telling you, in five to ten years from now, when I started telemedicine four years ago, it was almost nobody even heard of it. Um, now it's everywhere, and the little company that I started with was just a, just a starting brand new company, and now they have, they probably have 25 ladies in their call center um they have providers in every state um they're they're a multi-million dollar organization now they went from nothing to this huge huge deal uh telemedicine is the way it's going and whether we like it or not it's all going automated and medicine's going to go the same way i'm not sure how that's all going to work out for us bedside providers um but you know, I think I'll dabble in it as much as I as I do, and maybe more in the future, depending on what the situation is. But consider telemedicine. The money's good. The money's easy. You're not going to walk away from your daily daily workload with a strong sense of fulfillment. But at the end of the week or the end of the pay period, you're going to get paid. So, uh, and if what you need right now is money, then it is what it is. I need a combination of a decent good income plus I need fulfillment out of my employment um, telemedicine does not give me that so I know I'll never be able to do it full time but I will do it to some degree anyway telemedicine uh, consider it and uh, think it over anyway this is Mark Hill the traveling NP and I uh, just want to send this out and uh, hope any, hope people who watch it get something out of it and maybe it'll help you some way thanks a lot Talk to you later.